How did you, uh, how did you feel when you got the news that you were going to bump up the spot? Say what? How did you feel when you got the news you were going to bump up spot that you were going to headline this thing instead of... Oh, yeah. I felt I felt the same I felt before. It's, as long as I get a chance to fight in front of my home crowd, I didn't care. I could I could have been the first fight on the car. I don't care. How does it feel to fight at home in front of this uh, home crowd? I, you know, it feels good to come back here and, and fight. You know, I, I I felt like I owe you guys a fight uh, since um I couldn't make the first time I was supposed to fight here. I had to do that movie. It was the hardest choice uh, of my career, but. You know, I, I was the biggest uh, Mr. T fan ever, biggest biggest 18 fan ever, so I had to do that. So I always wanted to make it up to you guys. Talk about a little more. We got to have the thing to say, man. Obviously, he just doesn't like it. Man, Mo is, Mo is a fanboy. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can see it. He, he mad about, he upset about some stuff that ain't really got nothing to do with me. And he said some stuff that he shouldn't have said. And now, this weekend, shut him up. What's your strategy um, going into the fight this weekend? I never talk about my strategy before my fight. Never. Sorry. Does this fight have the history of making it more special because you are at home? Yeah, Dad. Yeah, it, it, that's, that was my motivation for uh, training so hard. My coaches couldn't believe how hard I trained for this fight. They, they couldn't believe it. It was like, I've never seen you train like this before. I'm like, because I'm fighting in front of my hometown. You know, I just want to put on a great show. I, I train so I can be able to go hard 15 minutes non-stop without even getting tired. So let's see if I did that right this weekend. Do you, do you have anything to prove against him? I, I got nothing to prove against him. I just want to shut him up and I want to do it in my hometown. I just want to I just want to uh, show the world that you know one of the baddest fighters on the planet comes from Memphis. That's all I want to show. And what mode do you get in that rap pace? You know, less than four, four, four to eight hours before fighting. I'm good. I'm still the same person, but like 15 minutes before the fight, I'd be in wolf mode. <laughs> <laughs> and what's that? What is that? You guys want to see. That's when rap page come out. You guys want to see. So who are you today? Quentin? I'm Quentin right now. All day. Until about 15 minutes before the fight. Well, Quentin, you said that a part of the reason you're signing with Bellator is because you knew that you were going to probably get fights. That's right. Um, mode, so he... Talk about that. Uh, what you want to know about that? You done said that. That's the reason why I signed. Well, what's the other part of it? Oh, uh, because I signed with I signed with Viacom. I did the other do movies, TV shows, and um, and TNA wrestling and Bellator fights. And I get to fight King Mo. That was, that's okay. What a contract get. And so, top to bottom, this card that the Memphis fans will get to see Saturday is pretty stacked. What do you think that they should expect on Saturday night? Uh, man, they, uh, I'm going to tell you, Bellator put together a great card for you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that they did it. I got no choice of what, what, you know, what card they bring. Yeah. And, and when I saw the card, I was really impressed. They, uh, they put together a really good card for you. I think Memphis can expect a great night of fights. You know, people just should come out and enjoy the fights. Cause it's going to be some exciting fights on that work. And yours will be the best one on the, on the card, I'm I, I, I hope so. I hope, I, hope, I hope my fight is the most exciting fight on the card, and I hope I walk away victorious with the, with the Wolf Howl tonight. I mean, Saturday night. Do you dislike King Mo? You just want to want to say. I just don't like to, you know, I, I don't know him well enough to dislike him. I just don't like, he, I think I feel like he disrespected me a couple times, and I need to shut him up. I, I don't like I don't like some of the stuff he said about me. I saw an interview the other day. He talked about I'm not a fighter no more. I'm just an actor. But the thing that personally got me not liking uh, King Mo is when he told me face to face that he wanted to fight me when I'm old and decrepit and, and uh, <laughs> on my way out. He told me that, and that was, that's what made me train super hard to, to destroy. I didn't train this to beat him. I trained to destroy King Mo, to destroy him. I'll make him eat all his words, and then. What I'm going to do, I'm going to have my manager give me all the interviews and stuff he said. I'm going to play it back out the woods. And then I'm going to try to edit myself in there laughing. At <laughs> what else is the difference? Uh, I can't even see you behind this. <laughs> 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 what else is the difference between now, these last two fights, and you've been over here in Bellatoria, and, and like the tail end of, of your time in the UFC? What else is, is different for you now? Is it just the health? Well, you know, not only am I healed up, you know, uh, like people should understand, like you're a professional athlete, you get injured. You know, a lot of times you talk about your injuries, people say, oh, you just make excuses. A person like that that says stuff like that uh, makes me think that they're either ignorant or they never even worked out a day in their life. Because if you're a professional athlete, you get injured, it just comes with it. And um, the UFC didn't give me time enough to heal up in between fights. And Bellator, 
you know what I'm saying? They allowed me to heal up, and uh, I went in and got my knees taken care of. And now I come over there, and it's just my mind is is, is better because I'm more positive. It's, a, it's, a, it's more of a positive atmosphere at, at Bellator. Any fighter can tell you, anybody that come over for the first time can tell you, the guys are just, it's just a, the behind the scenes uh, crew, the, the people that you guys never will get a chance to meet if you guys wasn't here, you guys are seeing some of them now. But there's things about, about the fight game that the fans never get a chance to see. But the behind the scenes and the people that work right there, they're so positive and, and the president Bjorn, he's very positive and uh, it just makes me makes me feel better, it makes me want to go out there and perform better. Bjorn has kind of called you vintage rampage at this point. Kind of reborn. Now that you're over here, would you say that that's accurate, or do you need a big win on, on Saturday for that to be the case? Well, let's, let's see. Let's see uh, Saturday, but I'm I'm tell you guys this: what you guys should know that anything can happen in the cage. So that's why I'm just going to keep it up there. Anything can happen once you step in the cage. But according to the way I train for this camp, it, I'm I'm better than the old man face. I, I I can't remember the last time I trained like this. The way I trained, I can't remember the last time I did. Probably been over ten years since I've trained away. How hard I try, I've trained this year. What makes you better? Is it the training? I mean, what what makes you say you're better now than you were? Well, I, I can say that the, the type of effort that I'm putting in together in training makes me a better fighter because um, the last, my last two opponents, you know, saying people want to argue and say that they wasn't top tier guys, but it didn't matter if they was top tier guys, I still was going to knock them out because of the way I train. I train to knock people out. I train to um, to finish people. Like I used to, I used to train to slam people, but now everybody knows I'm gonna try to slam them. Now people know I'm gonna try to knock them out, but in boxing people know you're gonna try to get knocked out and they still get knocked out. So I figured why not continue to train to knock people out. <laughs> Saying that, you know, Mo uh, is known more for his wrestling and then you are known for the standing you know, uh, style. So um, what gives you the advantage in this match on the well, people forget that I started off wrestling. I, I wrestled uh, on the coach Peter Bojo at Raleigh, Egypt, and um, I'm, I played sixth in state my first year um, um, wrestling in, in uh, Tennessee. You know, so I, I'm pretty proud of my wrestling. But I never went to the levels of wrestling that Mo did. He, he was a much more experienced wrestler than me. But I feel like uh, I'm a, a good defensive wrestler. That's one thing that's always been good about me. I, my defensive wrestling has always been good. So. I think that my my defensive wrestling is pretty good, and my striking skills are, are pretty good, and I, I got a strong chin. But him, his wrestling is great, and his stand up, I don't know, and his chin is very suspect, and his cardio is suspect as well. He gets tired. He's really gonna get tired this weekend. I'm gonna press the pace. What did you think about the new glove in comparison to the old glove Belzer had to? And can you describe the differences between the gloves? The new glove, it should have been around years ago. Like whoever invented that new glove is a genius. It keeps your hand folded so you can't poke people in the eye and it, and it helps protect your fist. It's way better than the old glove, that, that, that new glove. I, I, I think a guy named Dean invented What's Dean's last name? Lasner? Lasseter. Lasseter. That's a cool last name. I can't say it. <laughs> I think he invented that glove. That's, 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 that, that guy is a genius. Whoever that Dean guy is that invented that glove, he's a genius. I'm telling you, that's a that's that's a great glove. I love it. I love it. Does it hamper any grappling? Ah, it don't stop my grappling. It, 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 actually, if you think about it, it will help your grappling because it gets your hand, you know, it keeps your hand like where you can grab and stuff like that. When I when I wore it and I grappled a little bit, you know, I train in it now, so it, it helps my grappling. So if anybody want to say it, it's it's you know hurts your grappling or something, it's just all you say to people like this. Stop hating. <laughs> Daniel Cormier has put a post up on yeah. Instagram where he says he thinks that. Why do I care about Daniel Cormier? Is he is he in my in my league? Why do I care about what Daniel Cormier? But do you have a thought of him saying that? I have nothing. I have, I don't, no, he just talking because that's his boy. That's what people do. I don't think about stuff like that. That, that don't bother me. That don't bother me. I don't care what people say. I know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I don't care what Daniel say. Daniel can't get in the cage and fight tomorrow, can he? Okay. <laughs> they need to watch what he say before I smack the taste out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right on that note. <laughs> <laughs>